thanks for stopping by to check out this episode of Vintage Audio Review. In this episode, I am going to talk about the Craftsman Model 500 monoblock power amplifier. In 1951, 1952, this sold for $99, which would be about $1,100 in today's money. It was rated at 15 watts into 8 ohms at not more than 0.1% THD and had a frequency response from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz that was flat to within plus or minus 0.1 dB. I tested the pair of these as a stereo amplifier as I have done with the other monoblock amplifiers that I have had when there have been a pair of them. And this, these have had some mods to make them uh, more updated and I will give a tour of the outside of them and then I'll flip it over so you can see the circuitry uh, underneath and the mods that have been done and then there will be test data and finally there will be some opinions after I have listened to them. So once again, just sit back, grab a beer, a cup of coffee, some water, <laughs> a glass of wine, some tea, and hopefully you will enjoy the presentation I have put together on the Model 500. Here is a close-up view of the Craftsman Model 500. It's very pretty with all the chrome finish on it and this nice uh, plate here which identifies tubes. I guess I can mention those. I'm not sure if you can read them, but we have 6s and 7s here. I'm not sure why just the one has a cover on it, but it looks like the cover is too small because it should go down to the bottom and it doesn't, but this is just the way I got the amp. We also have two 6L6s here, your output tubes, and then here is our 5V4, which is a rectifier tube. Now, we'll get a, a closer view of it, but right here is our RCA input, and that is gold-plated. That is a modification. You might be able to see these capacitors over here that are on a little perf board, and those, of course, are not original. Um, you'll see some other mods here in just a moment. Here is a side view showing some of the modifications that were made to this particular Model 500. One of them was the installation of gold-plated RCA phono jacks for both. Uh, both units have had the same modification to them, as well as replacing the speaker terminal lugs with actual uh, three-way banana jack kind of binding posts. So those are really nice jacks and they replace the two wire power cord with a three wire power cord. I'm not sure if they actually connected the ground wire. We'll find out when we turn it over, but I'm assuming that they did. Here is the rear view of the Craftsman 500. Once again, here are our three way high performance speaker binding posts, I will call them. Now this warning right here is for the bias and you can remove the screws and then stick a screwdriver in there and there's two pots you can use to adjust your uh, bias. Here is our power on off switch and this is a replacement power cord. It's pretty heavy duty. This originally just would add a, a two prong AC cord and now it has a three prong cord and then here is a replaceable fuse. Here is a side view of the Craftsman 500 and I wanted to point out that originally uh, where these four capacitors are on this little perf board there was a big can capacitor somewhat like that. Now if you don't know there's usually several values of capacitors that are in here and they're typically uh, high voltage capacitors. Not always but often. And the rebuilder of this particular amplifier decided to mount the capacitors that were inside the can on the little perf board and connect that way. I, I think it's a good solution. I don't think it detracts from the unit a lot. However, I think I would have kept the original can capacitor on the outside and disconnected it and mounted the perf board with the capacitors underneath. As I believe we will see there was plenty of room, but they did it for both amplifiers and I don't really have a big problem with it as long as it works well. And I think it's a very clean implementation of that. So this obviously is a view looking from the underside of the Craftsman 500. I kind of just wanted you to see 
some of the components that they used and just kind of how neat everything was. Obviously they've used some really nice audio file capacitors and they also right here is a pair of electrolytics that have been epoxy to the side of the case. I'm not sure why they didn't do that with the electrolytics that are on the top. They could have easily have left the old capacitor can there and then rewired those capacitors underneath. There's plenty of room. I think they did a really good job other than that. I should point out that that ground terminal for the AC power cord is not connected to anything. Other than that, I think they did a pretty good job. You can see that it looks like all the resistors have been replaced with film resistors as well as they've upgraded some of the uh, other capacitors. So I think they did a really good job in their restoration of this. What we are looking at here is the frequency response of the radio Craftsman from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It's putting out one watt into eight ohms and overall it does not look too bad it's maybe down six seven tenths of a db at the high end of the band and depending on which channel you're looking at 1.1 to 0.8 db at the low end of the band it does have this little ripple noise on it it's two three tenths of a db i'm not sure that is anything that you would really hear but anyway that is what it looks like here we have the THD SNR at 1 kilohertz with the Radio Craftsman putting out 1 watt into 8 ohms. And you can see that our gain is about 11.3 dB. Our THD, oh, let's say 1.25% to 1.7%. Our THD plus noise is not stellar by no means, minus 35 to minus 38 dB. And our SNR is about 60 dB. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the harmonics. So here we have the harmonics operating at one watt and you can see that the even harmonic that would be the second one is higher than the third harmonic which is often but not always the case with tube amplifiers. Here we have the radio craftsman putting out five watts into eight ohms. The THD at three 0.5% we'll call it is beyond the 0.1% THD at 15 watts that this thing is actually specced at. You can see the SNRs are around 64, 65 dB, but the THD plus noise is looking pretty crappy at about minus 29 dB. And you can see all the harmonics and uh, power supply uh, hum right here. As you saw earlier in the video, these units have been refurbished but I'm not sure that they adjusted things properly because this is quite a bit of THD. Just for grins, we'll turn on the uh, THD bar graph display. So here we have the harmonics and you can see that uh, the second harmonic is higher than the third harmonic, so the even is higher than the third, but there's not a lot of difference be between them as there was with the lower power levels. Here is the result of the multitone testing, which shows a distortion-free range of only 7 to 8 bits. Here we have the output impedance of the Craftsman 500 amplifiers, and there was a specification for a damping factor of at least 32. Here, if we use the best case scenario of 1.9 ohms, we would get a damping factor of a little over 4. Here we have the THD versus frequency for three different power output levels, and that's into 8 ohms. And basically, the higher we go in power, the more our distortion increases. Our worst distortion is between 2 and 3 percent for most of the band. Once you get up to around 50 hertz or so, it's uh, less than 2.5 percent at 2 watts. Uh, it does get worse as you are lower in frequency as it shows here. As you saw from the test data, at 5 watts into 8 ohms, the Craftsman 500s were already hitting 3.5% THD. So I decided not to run these at 12 or 15 watts because they were beyond the max THD of 0.1%. Had they been around 1%, I would have gone up higher and see where the distortion got really bad, but I decided 3.5% was bad enough, at least from a measurement perspective. 
There is only one set of speakers that I own that I would feel comfortable testing these with, and those are the very efficient Klipsch La Scala loudspeakers. So I hooked those up to La Scala's, and the preamp I used was the Carver C1. And that does a pretty good job supplying enough output voltage for an amplifier that only has 11 dB of gain. When everything was connected, it sounded really good. I was surprised. Uh, most of my listening level was around 2 to 3 watts, and the amplifier sounded really good. I heard not, it not lacking in anything in the mid-range or the, the highs or lows. They seemed to do well, and they worked well with the La Scala. Now, there are some little quirks with these, as with any tube amplifier, when you first power them on, you're going to hear some little hums and, and pops and, and that kind of thing. That's, that's normal. Um, as far as hums, I connected loads to the inputs of both of the 500s and listened for hum out of the amplifiers and there was basically no hum out of the tweeter mid-ranger where I normally hear like a hiss. However, there was a low hum out of the woofers, the 60 hertz hum. It was very low, very mild. But other than that, the amplifier sounded really good. It was actually surprising. and. I was hitting around 11 and a half watts peak power uh, during some of the testing and that is using my realistic APM 500 peak power meter which has little LEDs that go across and I was hitting around 11 and a half watts I think it's 11.4 watts actually and there was no distortion that I could hear of course I was playing rather loud at that point but I really didn't hear anything distracting from the amplifier. It, it was surprisingly a nice smooth sounding amplifier is how I would describe it. So that is a good thing with it. And other than that, they, they're a nice looking amplifier. The owner of these may be purchasing some vintage Klipsch K-horns and these would work very well with those, I would imagine. And they're, they're a nice looking amplifier. I, I just it wouldn't be for me. I would like to be able to control the gain a little bit. They're kind of low on the, the gain, I think. My Mac Kit 30s have a gain control on them, which can help you fit the preamp uh, and system a little bit better. Uh, as far as I can tell, these do not have a gain control. And that would be my only negative with the low gain. But they're a nice looking amp. They sound very nice. You need to have some efficient speakers with them, of course. and. Um, they are expensive. If you were to try to find a pair of these in good shape, you're going to pay a couple of thousand dollars for a pair. I thank you for watching. If you have some questions or comments, please leave them below. I try to answer all of them. If you have not subscribed to the channel, that would be a very nice thing to do. And if you like the video, that would be a nice thing to do. If you don't like the video, I guess you could say you don't like it, but uh, hopefully we won't get too many of those. And once again, until next time, have a great day or night.